law enforcement investigation into allegations of domestic violence uh, by Zach Smith. He was informed of that investigation by athletic director Gene Smith in the fall of 2015. And both Coach Meyer uh, and athletic director Gene Smith regularly monitored the progress of that investigation for a period of months, uh, although the investigation did not ultimately result in any charges or an arrest. Second, uh, Coach Meyer and AD Gene Smith, although acting in good faith, uh, did not uh, report the investigation of Zach uh, Smith for domestic violence in 2015 to compliance as we believe they should have. Uh, although law enforcement uh, had not brought charges at the time that Coach Meyer and A.D. Smith became aware of the investigation, the compliance function would have been in the best position to assess whether to conduct an internal investigation into the allegations had they known about them. In the domestic violence context especially, uh, there are many cases in which abuse takes place, but there is no arrest or criminal prosecution. And so simply relying on law enforcement to take action in the face of such allegations is not, in our view, an adequate response. Third, uh, despite Coach Meyer's clear awareness and monitoring in 2015 of the law enforcement investigation of Zach Smith for domestic violence, uh, we ultimately did not conclude that Coach Meyer deliberately lied during his comments at Big Ten Media Days on July 24, 2018. He has consistently maintained that he did not recall in July 2018 what he knew in 2015 regarding the domestic violence investigation of Zach Smith by law enforcement. And we credit that Coach Meyer, in answering reporters' questions on July 24th, was closely focused on erroneous media reports that Zach Smith had been arrested on felony charges in 2015, which Coach Meyer had determined the night before not to have occurred. But his answers swept more broadly than the falsely reported arrest. And Coach Meyer falsely stated that he lacked knowledge of all relevant events regarding alleged domestic violence by Zach Smith in 2015. While those denials were plainly not accurate, Coach Meyer did not, in our view, deliberately lie. Fourth, Coach Meyer impressed us with his sincere commitment to the Respect for Women core value that he espouses and tries to instill in his players. We believe that uh, A.D. Smith shares that strong commitment. Fifth, uh, the independent investigation also identified and reported on a number of instances of misconduct and other problematic conduct by Zach Smith while he was employed at OSU as an assistant coach, some of which was known to Coach Meyer and A.D. Smith, uh, and some of which uh, was not. Uh, as, again, as I said at the outset, uh, these findings that I just uh, summarized for you and all of our findings uh, and the analysis supporting those findings uh, are set forth in detail uh, in our written report. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. We will now, now hear from uh, President Drake, Gene Smith, and Urban Meyer. Again, please hold your questions until the remarks of all three have concluded. After they have made their remarks, please raise your hand if you have a question. I will call on you and hand you a microphone. Please state your name and organization and ask your question. We will be limited to about 20 minutes uh, for this Q&A period. It's been a long day for everyone. And, uh, we hope to get to all the questions, but we're going to limit it to 20 minutes. And um, if there's things we don't get to for you, I think you all know where to reach us. We can talk tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Michael Drake, Gene Smith, and Urban Meyer. Good evening, and thank you for joining us here tonight. For myself and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to express my disappointment at the circumstances that, has led us, that have led us here today. We issued our summary of investigative findings and university actions earlier this evening. And I'd like to thank our independent committee for its tireless work. They work seven days a week and the product reflects their diligence. 
I'd also like to thank the Board of Trustees for its careful review and consultation. The Board met together today for more than 10 hours and had a frank and comprehensive discussion. Based on the independent investigation, I want to state clearly that we believe Urban Meyer did not and does not condone domestic abuse. However, he did fail to take sufficient management action regarding Zach Smith, and he was not as complete and accurate at media day and didn't, hold up the, uh, didn't uphold the high standard, uh, standards and values of the university on that day. Uh, therefore, Urban Meyer is suspended through September 2nd, 2018, and for the games on September 1st, 8th, and 15th. Meyer will forego pay for that period of time. In addition, Athletics Director Gene Smith also failed to take sufficient action in relation to Zach Smith's misconduct and did not exhibit the leadership we expect in his role as overseeing the Department of Athletics, including the football program. As a result, Gene Smith is suspended without pay from August 31st to September 16th, 2018. The discipline reflects our collective judgment based on the findings of the investigative report and the independent committee. The board fully supports this conclusion. We made this decision today based on the facts and our values as a university. We value the truth, and this independent team thoroughly and faithfully sought the truth. We value consensus, and today's decision reflects the collective wisdom of the board and the leadership of our university. Next, our athletic director, Gene Smith, would like to say a few words. To Buckeye Nation, to the Board of Trustees, and President Drake, I want to express my sincere apologies for the situation that we have before us. I appreciate the hard work and effort of the investigative team and the leadership of our president. I am very appreciative of the working relationship that I have with Dr. Drake and look forward to continuing that relationship well into the future. I would also like to thank our Board of Trustees and my colleagues at the university for their hard work and support during this time. I fully support the findings of the report and the subsequent actions that the university has taken. I have ultimate authority and responsibility in oversight and accountability for our athletic department, and particularly the football program. And I understand that I could have done a better job in this particular instance. I want to thank our university community and all of Buckeye Nation for their understanding and humbly ask them for their continued support of our most cherished asset, our student athletes, particularly our football team as they prepare for the start of another season in their academic pursuits as well. I want to thank Coach Ryan Day and ask that all of us continue to support him and our support staff around football. They have been strong leaders through this time, and we are appreciative of everything that they have done. My top priority over the next few days is to make sure that we do everything that we can to, to reaffirm Coach Day's commitment to being our interim coach during this time frame. I will also be working to ensure our student athletes have every resource they need to maintain their focus on academics and com competition. I know that the leadership team in our department of athletics will continue to keep our operations running smoothly. I'm really appreciative of President Drake. I'm really appreciative of our board of trustees. And I sincerely apologize to Buckeye Nation and all the student athletes that we ultimately serve for this situation that we're in today. So at this point, I'd like to ask Coach Urban Meyer to come up and share a few words. I know that the impact that the events of the last three weeks have had on this institution, an institution that I love, and how challenging this has been for our community, our president, a man who I have great respect for, and for that I am deeply sorry. I'm fully aware that I'm ultimately responsible for the situation that has harmed the university as a whole and our department of athletics and our football program. I want to apologize to Buckeye Nation. I followed my heart, not my head. I fell short in pursuing full information because at each juncture, I gave Zach Smith the benefit of the doubt. As I reflect my loyalty to his grandfather, Earl Bruce, who was my mentor and like a father to me, likely impacted how I treated Zach over the years. I did not know everything about Zach Smith, which was 
what Zach Smith was doing, and I'm pleased that the report made this very clear. However, I should have demanded more from him and recognized red flags. I needed to show more care and concern for the entirety of the situation and the people involved. I should have been more demanding of him in the same way I am of my players, other staff members, and myself. I should have done more, and I am sorry for that. I did a poor job at Media Day. It's a big reason why we're here today. I was not being as complete as accurate as I should have been at Media Day and afterward. But there is no intent to mislead. My role is to set a good example. In this instant, I did not live up to the university's standards. The suspensions are tough, but I fully accept them. I wish I could go back and make the different decisions, but I can't. These difficult lessons are a constant reminder of the duties and obligations that I have as a member of this university and this community. I take full responsibility for, I take this responsibility very seriously, and I will do better. I've been a Buckeye my entire life. For the past six years, I've worked diligently to build a program that the great state of Ohio and Ohio State can be very proud of. And I appreciate the opportunity to learn from a mistake, and I'll work as hard as I ever have to make our strong program even stronger. Thank you very much. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. For Urban and Gene, how hard is it to accept the suspension? And when Urban, and especially you, when you look back at, at you said you dis, you're disappointed with the way you kind of gave Zach the benefit of the doubt. What specific things do you regret handling in this matter? I'm sorry, what were... What things do you regret handling in this matter, specifically with Zach Smith? Why don't you think about it? I, uh, to answer your question earlier, Bill, um, I have huge regret uh, for my inability to be the effective leader that I should have been in this particular situation. Um, the greatest pain that I have is the people that I serve every single day. The 565 employees that I go to work with every day, the 1,000-plus student-athletes that we work for every day, and, of course, uh, all of Buckeye Nation and this institution. But um, it's been painful. It's been hard, um, particularly when people like you reached out to me and wanted to, me to comment, and I wanted to have an opportunity to, to uh, correct uh, some of the things that were being said very difficult for me and so it's been hard uh, but I'm very supportive of where we are today uh, we have a valuable lesson that we learn uh, we're going to move forward and we're going to be stronger for it so I'm very supportive of the decisions that have been made Bill please repeat the question well, most of what I know about Zach Smith is work related and I've, uh, throughout my career, I've taken an approach when I see someone in distress or someone struggling, I seek to get counsel and help for that person. And uh, the biggest regret, I wish I would know more. If I would know more, I would take action much quicker. Dan Murphy, ESPN. For President Drake and Gene Smith, um, can you tell us, the 10 hours is a long time to deliberate anything. Can you tell us what the conversations were today and why it took that amount of time to reach a decision? And then for Coach Meyer, do you feel you should have been suspended for what happened? So the, <clears throat> the discussion today was, we, was with our entire board. And so there are many people involved. We uh, uh, had heard the findings a couple of days go preliminarily and then had a chance to discuss and deliberate those today. We wanted to be uh, fair, we wanted to be equitable, we wanted to be uh, just, we wanted to be appropriate, and it, uh, we worked to uh, refine our decisions and our actions to be able to uh, do the best that we could to achieve those goals. This is a very difficult and complicated situation, many things to consider over a long period of time, and the reason that it took 10 hours of this is to try to make sure that we were being thoughtful and can consider it in every case. And the, the goal of all of it is to uh, first learn what we can and, as Gene said, to make our program, our university, stronger and better. Uh, we know also this is one of those circumstances where there's no right answer. It's, it's very difficult to, not, not possible to do something that makes everyone happy. Uh, and so in that circumstance, we're trying not to seek 
the sole uh, uh, perfect answer for everyone, but to be fair, to be just, uh, to be equitable, to be appropriate, um, and to do what we can to help us make our program stronger. Dan, just to be clear, I was not part of those deliberations. I trust and support our president. Uh, Gene, uh, Ari Wasserman um, from The Athletic. I'm just wondering, can you give us some more insight as to why the decision was made um, to fire Zach Smith when you did, if there was prior knowledge to this, because it kind of just happened in Chicago? And Urban, do you feel that you've done an adequate job throughout your entire career reading your employees and making sure that people are you know, not troubled, because it seems that Zach Smith dating back to 2015 and 2013 with the OVI, I mean, what, what is a coach's responsibility in trying to find those things out and, and noticing them just based on what you see in the building? So, Ari, to your question, uh, uh, Urban and I had conversations throughout that day, and ultimately uh, he came to a decision uh, that where he wanted to terminate Zach Smith uh, as a result of a number of different things over Zach's tenure. Uh, so um, I'd have to uh, really just let Urban just articulate that a little bit more. Uh, but he made that recommendation. I 100% supported it. Uh, but it wasn't just because of that singular incident. Please repeat. When you're just in the building, given the fact that it seems that Zach Smith's been a troubled employee for, you know, nine years, what is your role as Ohio State's head coach in, in noticing things? Um, you know, kind of getting a gauge of your employees and making, you know, sure that you're aware of the things that go on in their lives and uh, a little bit more insight into your decision to fire Zach uh, when you did. Well, as a head coach, you're ultimately responsible for everybody's behavior, and that's a very difficult thing to do. We all know that. Um, however, there were red flags, and uh, I wish I had known. I wish I did a better job of finding things out, or I wish I was told more things. Uh, but ultimately, and that's part of the job, that uh, you're ultimately responsible to represent this incredible university. And, um, and uh, I, I wish I had done more. I wish I had known more. Uh, second part was? Um, just the idea or the reason for firing Zach Smith when you guys did? I received on uh, that, uh, that week, I can't remember the exact date, that... Uh, Someone told me there was a court date. That were, was I aware of a court date uh, involving Zach? I said I was not. And they started explaining to me it was a trespassing issue. So I uh, immediately contacted Gene. I uh, told uh, Brian Votelini to find out more about what had happened. And uh, I actually called Zach Smith in. He was on vacation. I had him come in and say, what was this all about? He told me in great detail uh, what had happened and that he was... Uh, dropping his children off at a certain location and um, and then went to the house and eventually had a citation for trespassing. I was He made it sound like it was not that big a deal. I told Gene and Gene and I both decided to just keep him updated. And uh, I was very disappointed it happened uh, approximately two months prior to that. I was very upset that he didn't share that with me. And I made that clear. You have to keep me exactly posted on any situation like this so I can alert uh, Gene. And then I go to media days, and that Monday I find out there's a trust, uh, restraining order, and that's when termination became entered my mind. First of all, the seriousness of a restraining order, and then also, again, the fact that I made very clear that you keep me posted and alert me to any situation, and he did not do that. And later that day, I made the decision to fire him. Doug Maurice from Cleveland.com. Uh, Gene, and I guess President Drake as well, we know Urban was aware of domestic abuse allegations against Zach Smith at Florida in 2009. Gene, were you aware of those allegations when Zach Smith was hired at Ohio State in 2012? No, I was not. Is, is that a problem, and will there be a review of hiring practices at all? Should Ohio State have been informed about that since Urban knew that when he chose to hire Zach Smith? in 2012, is that something that should have been divulged to Ohio State when he was hired? Doug, that's a great question, appreciate it. Um, I had a conversation with our new uh, Vice President for Human Resources today uh, around our hiring practices and how we might be able to expand on our effort relative to our background checks. Obviously, all of our employees go through a standard background check. 
Uh, but the reality is we can probably go deeper uh, with some positions, and, and that's one that we can go deeper on. Uh, so I've committed to work with her as we move forward to implement new tactics and strategies to make sure that we can be a lot more thorough uh, so that hopefully this never happens again. Good question, Doug. Thank you. And President Drake, you, you weren't here at that time, but do you feel that was a failure or a mistake on Ohio State's part that Zach Smith was hired here to begin with? You know, the <clears throat> policies that were in place then were the policies that were in place then, and as Gene said, background checks were, were done as they are on all employees. It would be good to know more information uh, than that, partic particularly for a particular uh, certain position. So I, again, support, as Gene said, uh, I know he spoke with HR today about things we can do to have more information when, when hiring, and that would be something that would be an improvement for the future. And on the process of the decision-making today, President Drake, yes. what kind of consideration was there given in that process to firing Gene Smith or Urban Meyer? I would say that, uh, to be fair, we uh, looked at the findings. And then we considered the range of options that might be available, and we wanted to consider the entire range of options that might be available, and then worked hard to find a place that we thought was just, fair, and appropriate. And as I said, again, would lead us to uh, the lessons that would allow us to be a stronger university moving forward. Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Dr. Drake, uh, according to the narrative that was given out here, the uh, way I read it, uh, Gene Smith was aware of the Zach Smith situation in 2015 and had confab with Urban Meyer about it. So Urban Meyer's higher up knew about it, immediate higher up knew about it. So where's the breakdown now? And is there some sense in the university that things need to be more clear or whatever you want to call it from the standpoint of these kind of situations? <clears throat> So let me let me try that again. I'm sorry. So so just, in other words, uh, you, Urban, Urban Meyer's higher up knew about the 2015 allegation. Let me let me okay. if I may, sure. boss. Sure. Um, you know the reality is, uh, yes, I was the first one to have been contacted uh, about the allegation and, and at that particular time, uh, and I took it to Urban. Uh, my failure as a leader, as an effective administrator, was to include others. My normal practice in, is, is always to include others. Now, this particular case did not give me the red flags to cause me to do that. And I failed in that regard, and I should have. Uh, so I hopefully, Tim, that answers your question. Uh, at the end of the day, I should have included maybe uh, our vice president of in compliance and integrity as we continue to try and evaluate what was going on. Uh, so that hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, but to Tim. clarify, is Urban Meyer also supposed to uh, contact the compliance no, department I also? Have. I, I mean, should have. You should have. I should have. And then one other thing, you know, we may not get to talk to Urban now until September the 3rd maybe, but uh, Coach Meyer, you've been away from football now for three weeks, the heart of preseason camp. Uh, until September 2nd, I guess you won't be around, but I don't know, what, 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 how tough has this been for you in that regard? And number two, I guess what would be your message to Ryan Day and your players? It's been very tough, one of the toughest things uh, that I've experienced, and uh, I have very good players and a very good staff. Uh, my message uh, when I get to speak to the team is that I love them dearly. I appreciate all they've done for this incredible university. As I've shared with Dr. Drake, this is one of the best groups I've ever been around uh, on the field and off. And, uh, but it's also one of the best coaching staffs I've had. So uh, I look forward to uh, watching continue to grow and, and getting updates uh, as we move forward. Uh, hi, uh, over here, Mark Tracy from the New York Times. This is for uh, uh, Dr. Drake and uh, Gene Smith. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, obviously, this was not, there are a few other kind of, you know, unfortunate instances that have allegedly or indeed have been admitted to have happened around athletics. Uh, mainly there's troubling allegations regarding a former diving coach and, of course, the Dr. Strauss stuff. Obviously, this spans, in some cases, decades, clearly multiple tenures of multiple presidents and athletic directors. Um, having said that, you know, there are more than one, I guess you could say, and I guess my question for, for both of you is, uh, do you see this, the handling of Zach Smith, as kind of an isolated incident unrelated to anything else, or do either of you have broader concerns about the culture in the athletics department? <clears throat> Thank you. I'll answer that. First, you know, and you know that we are a large enterprise. We have um, 60,000 students on campus and 40,000 employees roughly a day, so we have 100 
thousand people who are engaged in a variety of activities that are uh, complicated, uh, uh, nuanced, uh, serious. Um, all of those things are happening all the time. So you've mentioned um, uh, incidents or circumstances that have occurred over, as you mentioned, uh, a span of 40 years um, in multiple generations of leadership and with people who have no association with one another, uh, except for they happen to happen here in that enterprise that we mentioned. And uh, so I would like to say a word about the uh, uh, a diving coach situation where uh, under litigation. So I don't. Um, I'm going to say some things that were in an article that um, was in your newspaper and, and say those things. This was a circumstance where complaints came to us on a Sunday about a, a coach in a club sport, not one of our varsity sports. Uh, that person was put on suspension, and his university uh, uh, access was uh, eliminated that day. Uh, an investigation began began the next day by our HR and our in, our uh, university. That investigation continued, and during that investigation, within a few days, the police were uh, began an investigation and were notified and began an investigation. And then two and a half weeks after the investigation began, the uh, individual was terminated and without possibility of rehire. Several other organizations were notified, uh, USA Diving, uh, the state of Maryland, uh, law enforcement, because there had been uh, alleged incidents there. And then our law enforcement was continuing the investigation uh, at the request of the original complainant. That investigation was stopped. So this was a, a, a situation where there was a complaint on a Sunday. Roughly two and a half weeks later, after being suspended immediately, two and a half weeks later, the uh, uh, part-time employee who was this uh, 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 summer club diving coach was uh, terminated without possibility of rehire, and authorities uh, here and across the country were notified. And so I just want to say that particular incident was one that, uh, again, under litigation, I guess I shouldn't say any more than I'm relating from the article in your newspaper. But we, we, um, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that I, we, did, we, we tried to do a good job to handle that and, and uh, uh, get that contained. The incidents that you mentioned that uh, occurred uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago, are also under investigation and also the subject of a lawsuit, and I have not, I don't have any uh, independent uh, information about that, so I can't talk um, about, about that. We look at everything that happens uh, and try to learn from it and to move forward. We think for our athletics program, there are lessons that we've learned in this particular situation, and we want to take those lessons to heart to be better tomorrow than we were yesterday, and that's the, the goal of a university, honestly, is to learn things, to teach things, to teach ourselves. Uh, to be better, and that's what we'll continue to do. Coach Meyer, uh, Greg Amante, ESPN. You had said you support you support the decision by the president, but if you could be more specific, knowing that your superiors were aware, do you think you should have been sp s been suspended? And follow up question is, what message do you have for Courtney Smith? Well, ultimately, I'm responsible for everyone's behavior in the football department. And uh, there was some behavior going on uh, that maybe I was unaware of, but I should have been aware of it. So I, I fully support our president's decision and uh, uh, respect it. And the second one is? What message do you have for Courtney Smith? Well, I have a message for everyone involved in this. I'm sorry that we're in this situation. And uh, I'm just sorry we're in this situation. Well, what about Shelley's text messages? Why were you not concerned from her messages about this situation? I was not aware of Shelley's text messages at the time. We have time for just one more question, folks. I'm, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap it up. I'd like to give it to Clay Hall. Coach, does this change in any way uh, gene addressed some things that they may change does it change the way you do business going forward maybe hiring or um policing the woody hayes i will say this that this has been a learning experience um, i'm a different person now than i was back in 2009 2012 uh, my awareness of domestic violence and how serious whenever you hear that kind of accusation absolutely of I've grown, but I've grown over the years, and uh, I will be very cautious. Uh, Gene and I have a great relationship. We uh, talk constantly, and I'm sure this, we haven't had a chance to really have deep conversation about this, but uh, 
I, uh, I will not make any hire without having complete uh, open dialogue with Gene and making sure that we are fully aware of what we're getting into. Okay, with that, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks, everyone, for um, joining us this evening. Uh, look for that investigative report uh, soon, and uh, have a safe evening. Thank you. So that is the official announcement from Ohio State. Let's recap the main takeaways. A three-game suspension for Urban Meyer without pay. That will be Oregon State Week 1, Rutgers Week 2, TCU Week 3. Gene Smith will get a two-week suspension without pay. And some of the important findings that we found out uh, from Ohio State was that these two men failed to take sufficient measures.